Praise God. So uh, Proverbs chapter 3 is, is where I'm, I'm having you hold your place. And, and if you would just, just hang there for just a second, because what I want to talk to you today about, I'm, I feel very passionate about it because I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. I have titled the sermon today, Pattern for the Promise. Pattern for the Promise. So that you can understand more clearly what I want to say today and, and the direction that God is, has, has led me, I want to talk to you about what a pattern is. If you were to do a word study on the word pattern today, you would find there's just uh, many definitions to that word, but maybe there are those definitions that can that, that, that can um, give it to us sort of in a nutshell. And as I began to do this study, I, I, I realized that a pattern can be a reliable sample of traits or acts or tendencies or other observable characteristics of a person, a group, or an in institution. It can be, you know, you, we, sometimes we hear it referred to as, you know, you ever, you ever heard somebody say, you know, uh, I've, I've noticed this particular person, I've noticed their, their, their behavior patterns. You've been around some folks that, that they, they got the kind of temperament that it don't take them long to get mad. They get mad quick. Don't look at nobody, just, just wave your hand. Amen. They get mad quick. It, 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 there's behavior. People have, we have behavior patterns. We have, uh, we have, sp some, we have spending patterns that affect our, you know, uh, our, our finances in our life. We have, we have these patterns in, in our life that are, that, that, that we go through every day. It's our tendencies. It's our, uh, it's, it's a part of how we do life. It's our traits. And, and so as a child of God, I need you to understand that there, you know, there are patterns that have been set for us in God's word. Patterns that will lead us down a particular path toward the promise that God has for us. The sad part about it is, is that sometimes living in the life that we live, we, we sometimes are influenced by people around us and we're influenced by, 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 by places that we go and, and, and people that, that we interact with. And so what happens is, is that we set out on this journey toward the promise of God, but sometimes uh, patterns change. And sometimes it leads us in a different direction. You know, when we talk about pattern also, that, that one, one thing that we might be able to re relate to is, is maybe the, uh, the, the example of a flight pattern. The, the, the flight path prescribed for an airplane that is coming in for a landing. It's a flight pattern. And they, as long as they, they adhere to that flight pattern, they will end up in the place that they need to end up. The problem it, it, it is that, it, 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 but here's, here's what I should say. The, the same thing applies to our, our walk with God. There is, God has given us a flight pattern. And if we'll follow that pattern, we'll end up where we need to end up. Another analogy might be a, a prescribed route to be followed by a pass receiver in football. You know, uh, it, it, it's, an, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a, an expert on this, but I, but I found out that, that there is communication that goes on between the quarterback and the receiver that he has, the, the, the receiver has a pattern that he has to run. And so what the quarterback is going to do, based on that pattern, he's going to send that ball in the direction that it is in so that if the receiver runs the pattern, the ball will end up where he is at that point. But what happens if the, if the receiver gets hard-headed and decides he's going to do something different than what they agreed on? When he gets to where he goes, the ball may not be there because that's not the pattern that was set. But this is what I found out about God's people. I found out that sometimes we like to change our pattern. Sometimes we like to veer off and change course. And then after we change it and we change our patterns and we start following the worldly patterns, then when we change them and we don't get the, and, and the outcome is not what we want it to be, we ask God, well, God, what are you doing? God's like, I'm not doing anything. 
The pattern's been set. You change things up. That's why it's so important that we remember the words of of Proverbs 3, chapter 5, when the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you, watch this, he will show you which path to take. Sometimes we get involved in this thing and we have our own idea of what we're supposed to do and we miss, we're missing the mark and we're off the course and we just get so frustrated. And it's not God's fault. Put your hand on your neighbor next to you and say, it's quiet. It's not God's fault. The apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he said, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Don't conform to the pattern of this world. You know, there's a reason why Paul would exhort the church at Corinth. There's a reason why he would encourage them to shy away from, from intimate relationships with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He said, for, for what communion has light with darkness? He that believeth with an infidel. You know, it's, it, it's, it's so many times in the church when we, when we talk about that passage of Scripture, we only relate it to someone we date or someone we marry, but, but so many times our, the circle that we have of friends that we have, you know, you know, you don't have to be married to a person for them to influence you. And especially, I'm, 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 I wonder about us calling, if we are believers and we're spirit-filled believers, I wonder about us calling someone my best friend that is not a believer. You mean, you as a best friend, you spend all this time with someone that doesn't love Jesus like you love Jesus? You say, I'm going to tell you something. We ain't going to talk long, and I'm going to talk about Jesus. I'm going to talk about him. I'm going to talk about how good he is. I'm going to talk about how much I love him. I'm going to talk about the effect that he has on my life. I'm going to tell you I don't get up in the morning without him. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. And I'm tangled up in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything I have, I owe it to him. You ain't going to be around me long. We ain't going to talk about him. And I don't want to hang, you know, be honest with you, I don't want to be around somebody a whole lot that don't want to talk to me about him. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to know how good Jesus is to you. But you know what happens? You know why sometimes our patterns get changed? Because sometimes we're traveling in circles with people who don't love Jesus like we love Jesus. And sometimes because we're hearing people say, hey, man, you, t- you talk to, listen, you know when the red flag goes up for me? When you start telling me I talk too much about Jesus. That tells me I'm hanging around with you too much. And I need to back off on hanging around. If I'm talking too much about Jesus for you, then me and you ain't got it going on. We change our patterns. We start doing things, start thinking differently. God is saying to us today, trust his flight pattern. On this journey toward our God-given destiny, there is a pattern to follow that keeps us on the path. And it's the word of God. And it doesn't change. Our culture is ever-changing People change their mind with the wind. Some people say, you know, you say, I, I, I know people change their mind day to day. Oh, no, no, baby, it's, it's, it's worse than that. People change their mind from minute to minute. I could be talking to somebody, they'll tell you one thing, and before the conversation is over, they've changed their mind. But aren't you glad today we serve a God that does not change? We can stand on his word. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. He said, I am a God, I am God, and I what? I change not. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but the word of our 
our God will stand. The word is the word and it never changes. Never changes. We change. But the word doesn't change. And what happens is, is sometimes we get, we get to the place where we feel like we know better than God. So we get involved in the thing. We change things up. And you know what? You know how the thing about God is? God will, God will let you change things up. Huh? He allows that. He'll let you change things up on him. You can change it up, but you know what God's going to do? He's going to step back, say, okay, have at it. Enjoy yourself. Do your thing, man. Waiting on you <laughs> to learn all of these life lessons about following him. Maybe one of the greatest examples of that is found in a passage of scripture that I used to say should be familiar in a character that's familiar. But in this ever-changing culture that we're in, we're, we're dealing with a generation of people who have less education in God's word than ever before. And you can't just take it for granted. You know, now when you talk about Noah, you got to tell folks who Noah is. <laughs> but I want to see here today, I, I, I want to talk about a character by the name of Jonah. How many of you remember from kids' church? You remember you were taught years ago, Jonah and the whale. Amen. In Jonah chapter 1, this is what the scripture says. It says, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. It's significant to mention that Jonah didn't just he didn't pick a city, just any city. He picked a city as far away from the one that God said go as he could, 2,500 miles in the other direction. He decided he was on a path to his destiny. He was, God had given him a voice, and it was a prophetic voice that could, that could make a difference. Let me stop and say this today. I believe that we are suffering from, the, from a lack of, of the prophetic voice that we need to hear from in the church today. I believe that we have a lot of people who wear a title of prophet who call people out and say, hey, I believe I see God giving you a new car and I see God giving you a new house and I see God filling your bank account full of money and I see this blessing and that blessing. But what about the prophets we read about in the word of the Lord that would rise up in a society and say, I see that you're going in the wrong direction. I see that you're moving further and further away from God, a voice that would rise up and challenge the people of God to turn and to go in the right direction. What about that prophetic voice? This was the anointing that would be upon Jonah. Jonah would, to, would be a man to cry out and to challenge a group of people that had gone in a wicked direction to turn their hearts back to God. And Jonah changes things up. But here, you remember what I told you? God will allow you to do that. But then here's where Jonah finds himself. In 14 verses later, in Jonah 1.17, the scripture said, Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah all of a sudden, Jonah has to check in to the whale motel. 
Can you imagine what these next three days would be like? Can you imagine what it would be like in the belly of this whale? Can you imagine what, he, what his accommodations are right now? And what it really, but what if you notice and you start to look at Jonah, in Jonah chapter 2, it begins to describe what these days are like for him. In Jonah chapter 2, from verse to verse, it tells what the, ex the experience that Jonah has in this well because he has made a decision to go in the opposite direction, to do his thing, his own thing, to change things up on God. He's now doing, he has decided to do it his way, and God says, hey, let's let you experience something that, and let you experience what it feels like to do it your way. And so when you look over in chapter 2, verse by verse, you begin to see as this thing begins to unfold as he is now deliberately going, has gone in a different direction than what God said. Verse 3 said, I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Verse 4 says, I was driven from your presence. Verse 5 said, seaweed has wrapped itself around my head. Verse 6 says, I was in prison in the earth. All of a sudden, Jonah is beginning to experience something that is overwhelming. It's a, he said, I'm, 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 I've got these wild and stormy waves over me. I'm driven away from the presence of God. I can't feel your presence. I've got seaweed wrapped around my head. This is, this is one thing after another. As this begins to unfold, we begin to see what happens when we decide to follow our own path. And do our own thing away from God. What we begin to find out is that wrong patterns, wrong patterns can lead to the delay of our destiny. It can lead to the delay of our destiny. God's got a plan and a purpose. But what happened and why some of us are living right now in a season of frustration is because we decided to change the patterns. And the patterns that you've changed it, the, the way you've changed it up, does it, it's not leading down the same path to, in the same direction. And so you're living a life frustrated and you're saying, man, where is God? But here's the positive thing today, y'all. The positive thing is, is that wrong patterns can lead to the delay of your destiny, but they don't have to necessarily lead to the denial of your destiny. They can lead to the delay, but it doesn't have to lead to the denial. It doesn't mean that it's over. It doesn't mean that God's through. As a matter of fact, I believe that God had me today to divinely share this word because there's someone looking at me right now in this room that you know without a doubt that the hand of God has been on your life. You know without a doubt that God had you going in the right direction. You have seen the power of God. You have experienced the anointing of God, but something happened along the way. You have been influenced by people around you and you changed up the patterns of your life that's led you down a different kind of direction and God sent the preacher by to tell you today that the delay or the delay is not a denial that God still has that perfect plan for you he still got that perfect plan he still got that purpose he still wants to use you wrong patterns can lead to the delay the delay of our destiny but not necessarily to the denial because here's the thing about it is, these, these, these patterns can be corrected. That's the kind of God I serve. We can get it right, y'all. Because see, what happened to Jonah was, Jonah, God gave Jonah a three-day, three-night stay in the whale motel. <laughs> And things happened at the well motel that changed Jonah's way of thinking. You know what? I've tried it my way for a few days. 
it's time to take it back to Jesus. Take it back to God. <laughs> I've done it my own way. Done it. Take it back to God. As a matter of fact, chapter 3, verse 3 says this. This time, John, God gives Jonah a second chance. And, and the Bible says, this time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command. And he went to Nineveh. Now, this is what I want you to notice. This is significant. Look at this. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large. Now, watch this. This is significant. A city so large that it took how many days? How many? Three days. Three days what? To see it all? How many days was Jonah in the well? You see what the enemy does to you? The enemy will take time from you and from God that belonged to him all alone. He spent three days in the belly of that well that he, could have been, that he could have spent in the city where God originally meant for him to go. There has been some wasted time in your life. But listen what the prophet Joel said. The prophet Joel said he'll give you back the years that the canker worm has eaten from you. He'll give you back time that the enemy has stole from you. I came to preach to somebody on this Sunday afternoon and tell you that the enemy will make you think that you're, you wasted it all of this time and there is no hope for you but God told me to tell somebody in this church today he's about to give you back days and weeks and months and years that the enemy has taken from you somebody give God praise and glory in the house of the Lord if you believe what I'm talking about today three days to see it all and then in verse 4 it says, and On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds. Jonah was back on the path, following the patterns that God had laid out for him. And he shouted to the crowd, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. Listen. The people of Nineveh believed God's message and from the greatest to the least, they did what? They declared a fast. They put on burlap to show their sorrow. See, here's what I need you to understand, ladies and gentlemen. Repentance is not you asking God to forgive you. Well, what is it then, Pastor? Repentance is so much more than that. That's why we're in the state that we're in because we have done that over and over again. We come to church, they sing a really good song that gets us gets a little emotional. We get the little emotional feeling. We feel a little convicted and we say, Lord, I'm sorry that I did that. But yet, you know what we do? We walk out of the church and go and continue to do the same thing we were doing and follow the same patterns we were patterned. Repentance means that I turn. And I go back in the direction I'm supposed to be going. I, I not only do I repent of what I've been doing, I turn from what I've been doing and I do what I'm supposed to be doing. When, when, when Jonah began to operate in his destiny, in his call, in his purpose, and he opened his prophetic voice and he began to preach under the anointing of God, it brought such conviction to the city of Nineveh that they didn't just ask God to forgive them. Notice what the Bible said. They declared a, a fast. They put on burlap to show their sorrow. They were sorry for their sin. Here's the cool thing about it. In verse 10, the Bible said, When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind. And did not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. Don't take the purpose and the plan and the call of God that's on your life. 
Don't take it so lightly today that you allow people around you to mess, to mess with the patterns of your life and to mess with the path that your life is going and the calling of God that's on you today. Here's what's great, y'all, just like Jonah. God gave him another chance. I'm speaking to someone in this room that you know without a doubt the hand of God's on your life. You know without a doubt God has a purpose and plan for you. And you know that you have, you've, you've veered off the path. You've changed patterns. You've started doing things differently. And just listening to folks that, and, and now today you realize conviction. You're under conviction today because you realize how powerful the plan of God is for your life. Here's what you need to understand. Young people, listen to me today. There's an enemy of your soul. There's an enemy of your soul that's after your purpose. He's after the plan of God on your life. And let me tell you, let me tell you something about the devil. You know, Y'all, let's please, let's, let's quit acting like we're still in kids' church. Let's quit acting. I mean, let's not act like that the devil is, you know, he's this big red figure with a, a pitchfork tail and a, come on, y'all. The, the devil has got this thing packaged up. Hear me. Young men, God's got a destiny and a purpose and a plan for your life. And he's going to, the enemy's going to package the thing that, that, that will detour you from your destiny. He's going to package it in. Huh? Do I have to be real about it today? He's going to, the enemy's going to bring about this. <laughs> And she going to have all the things in all the right places. Let's be real about it. And she going to know how to dress to show you. Don't get quiet on me, y'all. Y'all ain't mad. Y'all don't get mad about the fact that they want to teach your, kid, your pre-K students about. Y'all ain't got mad enough about that. But y'all get mad in church. I ain't scared of you. Listen, this is what your Bible says. Hear me closely. This is what your Bible says. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that appears to be right. But in the end, it leads to death. It appears to be right. It appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. It looks fun. It looks good. Everybody's doing it, right? Everybody's doing that. You know, and here, here this is what happens in church. Everybody says, oh, but man, Pastor, you know, you've been doing this a long time, man. You've been serving God a long time. 25 I'm 20 you know I'm, I'm young I got my whole life ahead of me man I can do that anytime I'm trying to have some fun right now only thing you're doing is you're opening up and giving place to the enemy Oh, it's okay. You, you, you know, that church you go to, man, those folks are not no, no fun. They're not any fun. It's okay. Here, here, come on. Let me, have you tried a little bit of this right here? Let me try this. Man, this, this, and a little bit ain't going to hurt you. Stop and ask yourself this question. My dad used to say this to me, and I'm going to close. I feel y'all pulling on me. My dad used to say, son, anytime you get ready to make a decision, when people approach you and they offer you things and you're not sure about, stop for a moment and think what the results of it are going to be six months from now. What the results are going to be a year from now. You see, let me tell you something. 
What the enemy wants to do, he wants to rob you of your spiritual destiny. He wants to rob you of the perfect plan that God has for your life. But today, I believe God would have me to preach this sermon and share this sermon with somebody today listening to me, young and old, that you veered off the path. And you've allowed, and you've, you, the patterns of your life have changed, and you started doing things that you would not have done before, and the things that you're doing are leading you away from God, not leading you to God. And God is challenging people all across this church today. Where are you? What are, what are you doing? What are the patterns of your life right now? Are the patterns, are the things, the tendencies, the things that you have in your life, are, are, are the, the, time, the way you spend your time, uh, what, what, uh, uh, your, your behavior patterns, all of these things, are they in line with the will of God? Are they in line with what God wants to do in your life? Are they helping you reach the goal, the plan and the purpose of God? Or are they leading you away from God? I'm going to ask you to stand with me all over the room today. And this is what I felt all day long. I felt this in the first service today. I couldn't tell you the dozens of people that began to raise their hand. This is what I feel like God wants me to do. I think God wants me to challenge people in this room right now about where you are in your relationship with God. Where you are on your path, on the path to your destiny, to the plan that God has for you. I believe that God wanted me to say something today that would challenge someone to stop for a moment and look at your life and how you're living your life. And it's what I'm doing every day and, and the patterns of my life, my the way I carry things out in my life, all of my habits, things are these things pushing me toward my destiny? Or away from my destiny? Are the friends that I have in my life right now, are they helping me get to where God wants me to be? Or could they possibly be hindering me from where God wants me? Some of these habits that I formed, are they helping me? Or are they hindering me? Where are you today? Where are you on your path to the destiny that God has for you? Or has the enemy been so successful in introducing these new patterns of your life that he's gotten you really to the place where you really don't even think about your destiny anymore? You don't think about the plan, the perfect plan that God has for you. Some of you, I believe today, the Holy Spirit wanted to shake you and remind you. This is where I was taking you. This is where you were headed. Do you not remember the plan that I have for you, says the Lord? But yet today... Do you feel closer to it or farther away from it? With every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around, let me ask you, are you that one? Are you the one that the Lord is talking to today? That maybe you veered off the path. Maybe you've developed some new patterns in your life that's just not spiritually healthy for you. 
And you're one of the frustrated ones right now. You're frustrated because at one time you knew, you knew what God's will was. You knew you were headed in the right direction and you could see the hand of God on your life. But today, today, you're a little frustrated. Today, you're not sure. If that's you right now, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If that's you and you're going to be real with yourself and God, just slip up your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. I just, uh, that's me. You're talking to me today. I know God has a plan for me. I know God has a purpose for me. I know God wants to do something in my life. I know he is sending me in, the, in a certain direction. I know and I have experienced the anointing of God. But, Pastor, i got to be real about it. I've allowed some things. I've changed some patterns in my life that's moved me away from my destiny instead of to my destiny and if you just lifted your hand just then don't you wait on anybody else to move get out of your seat and come down to the front of this church today and let's pray together today let's ask God to do what he did in Jonah in your in your life today to get you back on the path you need to be on the path to your promise the path to your destiny that's right come on all over this room come on all over this room come on all over this room.